A very warm welcome to Durham Cathedral, the Shrine of St Cuthbert, for this service of choral evensong on the second Sunday after Trinity. A particular welcome if you're joining us for the first time, wherever in the world that may be from. It is good to be able to gather together virtually in this holy place. Let's take a moment of quiet as we prepare ourselves to come before God. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah.
The first lesson is taken from the first book of the prophet Samuel, chapter 24, beginning to read at the first verse. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterwards, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My Lord, the King! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge, and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it, and plead my cause, and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning to read at the 12th verse. In this reading, we join Jesus, who has been invited to eat at the house of a prominent Pharisee. Jesus said to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours, in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the dinner guests, on hearing this, said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have just been married, and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and the lanes, and compel people to come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Keep us, we beseech thee, under the protection of thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works to proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Be still then, and know that I am God. Words from this evening's psalm. And so we give thanks for the still moments of the day, for the times when God's presence has been tangible, for the sacrament of the present moment. We pray for those who have not known stillness or calm today, for all who live in places of fear or violence, for those for whom it is a struggle simply to find food or shelter, for those feeling anxious or overburdened. Grant us courage to work for a world in which all are valued equally, in which prejudice and racism are no more, and in which all know peace and plenty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Father's Day, we give thanks for those who love and care for us, and for those who have been father figures in our lives. We ask God's blessing on those who feel the absence of a father, and on fathers who experience the pain of separation from their children. As lockdown restrictions continue to ease, and families are gradually reunited, so we give thanks for the joy of relationship and the gift of family life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the Church in all the world, gathering in new ways during these unusual times and reaching out with God's love to those in need. We ask God's blessing on communities opening their church buildings for private prayer over the coming weeks on those who will visit to pray, and on those overseeing arrangements to keep them safe. We pray for our own cathedral community and for this Diocese of Durham. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be still then and know that I am God. In the quiet, we offer to God the evening ahead and bring to him the prayers and thanksgivings of our own hearts. We draw our prayers together in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always.